Introduction There is a wonderful game called Mind Ball. This game is played between two players. Both wear brainwave-sensing helmets and sit at the two edges of a table facing each other. A ball sits in the middle of the table. When the game starts, both players stay as calm and focused as possible. Each player's brain waves are measured, and the player whose brain is calmer and manages to move the ball away from them until it goes all the way to the opponent's side wins. The motive force, measured by each player's electrodes and conveyed to the ball by a magnet hidden underneath the table, is the combination of alpha and theta waves produced by the brain when it's relaxed. The more alpha and theta waves you produce, the more force you mentally exert on the ball. Essentially, Mind Ball is a contest of who can be the calmest. It's fun to watch. The players visibly struggle to relax, closing their eyes, breathing deeply, adopting vaguely yogic postures. The panic they begin to feel as the ball approaches their end of the table is usually balanced out by the over-eagerness of their opponent. Both players alternately lose their cool as the big metal ball rolls back and forth. There is a widespread recognition that this tension, how to force yourself to relax, to shut off your mind when you need to, is a challenge for professional athletes or other performers. In our culture, the benefit of not trying too hard, of being in the zone, has long been appreciated by artists. The jazz great Charlie Parker is said to have advised aspiring musicians, don't play the saxophone, let it play you. The same openness is also crucial in acting and other performing arts, which fundamentally rely on spontaneity and seemingly effortless responsiveness. A stand-up comedian who is not in the zone isn't funny, and an actor who is not fully inhabiting his or her role comes across as wooden and fake. Explaining how to prepare for a role, the actor Michael Caine cautions that simply memorizing the script and trying to act it out step by step will never work. When it comes time for your line, the only way to bring it off authentically is to not try to remember it. You must be able to stand there not thinking of that line. You take it off the other actor's face. He is presumably new minting the dialogue as if he himself just thought of it by listening and watching, as if it were all new to him too. Otherwise, by your next line, you're not listening and not free to respond naturally, to act spontaneously. The importance of being in the zone is perhaps nowhere more appreciated than in professional sports, where the competitive edge provided by complete absorption is the stuff of myth. A 2005 piece in Sports Illustrated consists solely of quotations from professional basketball players about what it feels like to be in flow. The ball feels so light, and your shots are effortless, says Pat Garrity of Orlando Magic. You don't even have to aim. You let it go, and you know the ball is going in. It's wonderful. It's like a good dream, and (laughs) you don't want to wake up. It's like an out-of-body experience. Like you're watching yourself, says Joe Dumars, former NBA All-Star guard. You almost feel like you don't even see the defense. Every move you make, you feel like, God, that guy is slow. You don't even hear the regular noise you normally hear. It's muffled. You go to practice the next day and you say, God, why can't I do that every night? The reason professional athletes would love to bottle that feeling is that it all too easily disappears. As Dumar says, professional basketball players in the zone don't want to wake up, but they often do. Ben Gordon, formerly a guard for the Chicago Bulls, puts it like this. When the feeling starts going away, it's terrible. I talk to myself and say, come on, you've got to be more aggressive. That's when you know it's gone. It's not intuitive anymore. Even casual athletes are familiar with the pain of falling out of the zone or finding it just beyond their grasp. Imagine that you're in the final set of a tennis match, playing your best game ever and about to defeat a higher-ranked opponent for the first time, and the dawning realization that you are about to win makes you begin to lose. You become tense, overly cautious. You begin to think about your swing instead of just swinging, and the opponent begins to close the gap. 
you know what you need to do. Just relax and get back into the groove. The more you think about relaxing, though, the more you tighten up. And you watch helplessly as your lead disappears and your opponent gets to gloat once again. Getting the mind to shut off and allow the body to do its thing is clearly a challenge we all face. We may not be subject to the same pressures as Joe Dumars or Pat Garrity, but in many ways, our sports events can be seen as a massive game of mind ball, where you can win the game only by relaxing and getting yourself into flow. Yet there is nothing magical about this state. It results from our brain's ability to anticipate, learn, and condition itself to safely, reliably, and rapidly reach the state. It is within everyone's reach, as long as you know how it works. This book will explain how flow experiences are achieved and identify conditions that make it more likely to occur.